He learned the game in the heartland of basketball, the small town of French Lick, Indiana. And Larry Bird became a Hoosier hero when he led unheralded Indiana State to the NCAA Finals. He went on to another place of basketball tradition, the city of Boston, and revived the NBA's most fabled franchise. I really didn't care about being the best player in the league or best player in the world. I just wanted to be the best player I possibly could be. Bird led the Celtics to three championships in the 1980s and established himself as an all-time great. Now that's a steal by Bird. Underneath the DJ, lays it in. Right up, one second left. What a play by Bird. After retiring in 1992, he received a final tribute in Boston. I never put on a uniform to go play a game. I put on a uniform to win. And in 1998, he took his place in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Very proud to say I spent 13 years playing for the Boston Celtics. This week, the story of Larry Bird on Overtime. In the long run, I'll be able to handle myself, man, the man with almost anyone in the league. And the Celtics, they have done it again. A spectacular finish. He was the ABA. He revitalized the NBA. He presses the inner button in the heart, and all of a sudden he just makes it up. This man has a smile that lights up a television screen from here to Bangor. There will never, ever, ever be another Larry Bird. Michael will take it. He's fouled. He scores. Shaq the man, most dominant player in the world. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bruce Beck. They call him Larry Legend. And Larry Bird lived up to the name in every sense of the word. The legend began in Indiana and grew in Boston, where he returned the Celtics to glory. Today on Overtime, we'll span his brilliant career by hearing from Larry at his stops along the way. As a rookie in 1979, Bird immediately turned the Celtics around. By his second season, he had led them to the championship. And the so-called hick from French Lick had formed a bond with fans in Boston, as Pat O'Brien explained in this feature from 1984. Boston tends to adopt its sports heroes. It was the Celtics' Bob Cousy in the 50s and 60s. Bobby Orr iced the title with the Boston Bruins. And Carl Yastrzemski of the beloved Red Sox. And now... Larry Bird. Get it in the bird. Bird takes the jumper. Yes! Yes! And he's earned the title of Boston's newest favorite son by playing good old-fashioned, work-to-the-bone, hardcore, in-your-face basketball. Maybe the best player since Bob Cousy or before. I think he's the best player that's come along since Naismith hung up that peach basket. My main goal was try to be the best player I possibly could be, and um, I really didn't care about being the best player in the league or best player in the world. I just want to be the best player I possibly could be. There is no question he's achieved the individual goal of consistent excellence and used this to lead the Celtics to a world championship in 1981. But when you are Larry Bird, your work does not end at the buzzer. It seems everybody wants a little part of you. Sometimes they pay for it, but still it's mostly troublesome. Larry Bird! Basketball is the easy part. Everything you do off the court is, is the hard part putting up with the fans, uh, trying to do things that you want to do when you can't do them, uh, just being left alone, that's probably the hardest part of anything. So in an effort to be left alone, he uses his passport a lot. It's a paradox that a guy who loves basketball so much travels so far to get away from adulation and glory. It's always good to see the other parts of the world. I think that people are more friendly and um, go out of their way to, to help you out uh, by staying out of your way. It's uh, a very positive attitude over there and they respect you and they uh, respect your privacy. One place he gets all that is home in French Lick, Indiana, where despite having his own street, he's just another guy. He's not stuck up, you know, he makes a lot of money and, you know, he's, he's nationally known, but yet he's just an average Joe. But his life has been anything but. Off the court, his younger years were filled with turmoil following high school within a short period of time. He had a marriage that failed, a daughter to raise, his father committed suicide. All this after he tried Bobby Knight's Indiana program, but he thought the school was too big, so it was on to Indiana and finally have some fun. And what position do you play with the team? Um, 
Well, you know, as you know, I had to do everything, so I play all positions. And he did play everything in his senior year, winning 33 in a row until Indiana State was defeated by Magic Johnson's Michigan State in the NCAA championship. But Larry was rewarded with a Celtic contract, and notoriety only made him long for home and those familiar ties. Close friends are, are very important to me, and you, you live and die with them, and there's very few that I really do have. Uh, if you had to have one thing, I think love and the family and friendships are the most important. To that end, he built his mother a house back home. His unselfishness is not a front. In fact, sometimes it's an obligation. There's a lot of pressure up for me to provide for other people. And, you know, I got two brothers at home and I got a, a mother and uh, I got a daughter and I got a uh, fiance and I got everything going on here. And I, I'm really supporting three families. But on the court, pressure never seems to bother Larry Bird, at least not when he's got the ball. And all in all, Larry's turned all this into a dream come true. What would be the perfect Larry Bird life? I got it now. That interview took place during the 84 Finals, a classic series in which the Celtics beat the Lakers in seven games. Larry earned the Finals MVP award, not to mention some revenge against Magic Johnson after Magic won their meeting in the NCAA championship game. But no matter how much he achieved, Bird was never satisfied. His work ethic and will to win drove the Celtics throughout the 80s and will move to the next phase of his career when overtime returns. In the prime of his career, no one played quite like Larry Bird. His clutch shooting, superb passing, and all-around mastery of the game were all part of his greatness. Larry was a three-time MVP while leading the Celtics to three NBA titles. But his fierce playing style caught up with him as he began to suffer constant back problems. Here's a look at Bird in his later years in this feature from the 1991 season. Again and again throughout his career, Bird had managed to do the impossible. Over the back Creating an aura of invincibility. Bird. It's the tie for the money. Yo! But perhaps it is the twilight of his career that provides the keenest insight into the essence of his greatness. As the 80s gave way to the 90s, age and injury would take their toll. But though his physical skills had begun to diminish, Bird showed he was still capable of his team, sometimes by force of will alone. Not even the relentless assault of time could dim Bird's spirit. I can remember when I first came in the league, Art Gilmore told me one time he played for Chicago, he said, if you expect to play a long time in this league, you better quit mopping up the floor. And I thought, well, he's crazy because that's what basketball is all about. We're getting a little bit older now and, and feeling the bangs and the bumps and the bruises and all that. I can see where he's coming from, but I can't change my style of play. i got to play like that every night. The challenges he faced had changed, but Bird had remained steadfastly the same. Larry still kind of comes in with that 22-year-old uh, attitude about, about basketball. Bird again on the other end. Short with the hook. Catledge, a traffic rebound. Bird strips it, tips it. Yeah! He was just uh, a phenomenal teammate you know, who, who could do anything and everything by himself, but always in the framework of the team. I care about my teammates. I want to see my teammates do well. He personified that. Brought his values that he had in the seventh grade in French Lake, Indiana, and he stayed with them. I remember distinctly one summer calling him in. He was working out in Terre Haute, and I called.
caught him in the boys' club there. And uh, he called me back and I said, Larry, I said, the president of Harvard called and he wanted to know, would you be kind enough to address the freshman class on the values of having a college education? It'll only take you 10 or 15 minutes, you know, to do so. He said, no. I said, well, <clears throat> also, Sports Illustrated want to put you on the cover and they want you to take some pictures and they said it wouldn't you know, take that much time. He said, no. I said, Life Magazine also called. They want to just take pictures. They didn't want to do an interview. They'll run a 10-page spread on you. And they just want to follow you around and have your permission to take pictures. He said, no. He said, Mr. Wolf, he says, I thought you said this call was important. Larry Bird grew up in French Lick, Indiana, with a ball, a basket, and a dream. Around here, you, you learn to play uh, by yourself or with a friend. And if you're going to make anything of yourself, you've got to do it on your own. Practicing long after his friends had gone home, he would find the essence of the game, and in many ways, of himself. I think Larry always looked at himself as a poor person, and uh, this was his claim to fame. This was his opportunity to really show people, you know, that, that he's as good as anyone else. He has played with the passion of the underdog, the purity of tradition, and a vision that is his alone. You look at people like MacArthur, where the war happens, and Patton, and General Patton, there's a war for them to shine in. Uh, Larry, Larry was born to play basketball. Touching the hearts of all those who have watched him play, he has left behind a sense of wonder and a legend. Could you imagine a floor down here? for the greatest organization in the world and having 15,000 people out chanting Larry, Larry, Larry. Now don't you think that would make you proud? After Larry Bird's retirement, the Celtics made plans to retire his number 33 jersey. But they knew they just couldn't do it at halftime of a game. For a player as special as Bird, the farewell ceremony had to be just as special. So an entire evening was set aside in his honor. In February 1993, a sellout crowd packed Boston Garden as fans had the chance to cheer one last time for the great Larry Bird. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thirteen years ago, when I loaded up the car and headed to Boston, I really had no idea what I was getting myself into. I thought I would come in front of you and play in front of about 10,000 people, do my job, go home, come back the next night, and repeat it. I've been very fortunate over the years. <laughs> I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to make me cry, and you probably will. I've been very blessed over the years. I played with some of the greatest players that ever played the basketball game. I had an opportunity to play with Robert Parrish. I had a chance to play with Kevin McHale. I had a chance to play with Tiny Archibald, Cedric Maxwell, and Dennis Johnson and more and more and more. Yes, I'm going to miss playing for the Boston Celtics because I was very proud to play for the Boston Celtics. I never, I never put on a uniform to go play a game. I put on a uniform to win. I was taught to win. I was taught to win and I was taught to be proud. I was taught to hold my head up high. When you lose, you hold your head low. You try to motivate yourself to the next game. Yes, I'm going to miss running the pick and roll with Robert Parrish. I'm going to miss throwing the ball down low to Kevin McHale and watch him do his work. See, them guys took all the pressure off of me. If I couldn't get the shot off, 
all I had to do is go to them. Yes, I'm going to miss playing with DJ, the backdoor pass, cutting on the basket for the easy layup. But most of all, believe it or not, I'm going to miss the fans of Boston and the people of Boston. Because, like, like Magic said, he said, you made me take my game to another level. But can you imagine being on the parquet floor down here for the greatest organization in the world and having 15,000 people out chanting, Larry, Larry, Larry. Now, don't you think that would make you proud? But tonight, I leave you and I say thank you. I'll be around. But tonight, my basketball career is officially over, and I had a blast. I want to thank Magic Johnson for helping me to develop a game that I've always... I think it's very ironic that we both go out, came in the same year, go out the same year, go to the Hall of Fame in the same year. We've both been blessed, and we've been very honored to play for the Celtics and him for the Lakers. But I leave tonight, and all I can say is thanks. Looking out here tonight and seeing all these people in here makes you feel like you're on top of the world. See, I'm a proud individual anyway, but I'm also proud to be plan for the best organization that has ever assembled. And thank you, Red Arbach. Thank you so much. So, and may God bless each and every one of you. Good night. the type who probably would have been happy to play his games in an empty gym. He once said, I don't need all the fanfare, all the publicity. My style is not to draw attention to myself. It's to play basketball and win. But he said he didn't mind the attention that night at Boston Garden because it gave him a chance to say goodbye to all the fans. For Larry, there was one more honor still to come, as we'll see when overtime continues. You know, I've always considered myself a very proud individual. I've always said I was very proud to come from a small town, Brunswick, and West Maiden, Indiana. I was, always, I was always very proud to spend four great years in Terre Haute, Indiana, and in Indiana State University. And guess, I'm very proud to say I spent 13 years playing for the Boston Celtics. Be patient on offense, okay? Take your time to get whatever you want. Mark, yeah. you're out there now. They front Rick with the pitch, okay? okay? Take your time. It's all right. You're going to win now. Larry Bird retired as a player in 1992, but he wasn't through with basketball. Five years later, he returned to his home state of Indiana to become head coach of the Pacers, and he continued to be successful, guiding the team to the NBA Finals while being named the league's Coach of the Year. In 1998, Bird returned to the Boston area, Springfield to be exact, for the crowning moment of his career, enshrinement in the Basketball Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. I was going to have Bill Walton write my speech at night. They say his speeches are a lot longer than his career was, so we'll try to stay away from that. Tell you one quick story about Coach Fitch. Back in 1980, when I first came to the Boston Celtics, uh, <laughs> when I first came to the Boston Celtics, when we went on, a, <laughs> when we went on to uh, our road trips, we had a thing called seniority. 
sometimes there were enough first class seats for all of us. So of course the rookies and the one or two year veterans had to go to the back of the plane. Well, I did that the first two or three road trips. And one day I sat at the airport and I was just thinking, wondering what kind of ticket I'm going to get today. Am I going to get a pink ticket for first class? Am I going to get a white ticket for coach seat? Well, we, we just came off a three-game road trip, and I played very well, so I thought, well, this is the time to make my move. <laughs> Ray Melchiori came by. Sure enough, he handed me a white boarding pass. I said, excuse me, Ray, you go tell Coach Fitch that I'm a first-class player. I expect a first-class seat. <laughs> Of course, Ray came back, and Coach Fitch says, tell him to get his butt on the plane. <laughs> you know, I've always cons considered myself a very proud individual. I've always said I was very proud to come from a small town, French Lick in West Baden, Indiana. I was, I was always very proud to spend four great years in Terre Haute, Indiana, and in Indiana State University. And guess, I'm very proud to say I spent 13 years playing for the Boston Celtics. I don't know what else to say. I tell you, it's been awesome. <laughs> I would also like to also like to thank Red Arbach for drafting me back when I was a junior in college and waiting on me for a year. And I would also like to thank Donnie Walsh for giving me an opportunity to coach the Indiana Pacers. It's something I didn't think I would ever want to do, but after talking to Donnie and promising him that I would win a championship, he bit the bait, and I'm in Indiana. <laughs> but thank you very much. I'm so thrilled and so honored to be here tonight. God bless each and every one of you. Quite a journey for Larry Bird from the small town of French Lick, Indiana, all the way to the Hall of Fame. Larry finished his career with averages of 24 points, 10 rebounds, and 6 assists. Magic Johnson said Bird was not only the best all-around player he ever saw, but also the smartest and the only player he ever feared. And there will certainly never be another one like him. That's it for this edition of Overtime. For NBA TV, I'm Bruce Beck.